question. Are we are we aired yet? We're not. We're still backstage, we're, right? We're recording and we're okay. on, uh, but I, nothing's edited. So real okay. quick, basic. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining in. I should have introduced this forever ago. We got the always amazing Brian from FX Billiards, and we and we got the super amazing Chuck from Backyard Billiards. Guys, welcome so much. How are you guys? Outstanding. So, um, while I while I still have my thought, yeah, no, no, <laughs> yeah, yeah, please. You were you were saying you know Chuck and I can send you some some racks, some throwaway racks or whatever. Um, I'm going to be doing, and I, I guess this is a plug for FX Billiards at the same time. I'm going to be doing more um, podcast stuff. You and I have talked about it. Uh, Chuck and I have talked about it. So I'm going to have you each on as guests, probably uh, separately, because um, yeah. we can do our, our three man thing here. But um, the just a an, um, on that note of watching us shoot during the podcast, I think it's a very good idea to to have a situation where. Um, you're showing people shooting pool, <laughs> like like we review your shots on you on the podcast uh, yeah. when you when you can, because there are some people and you know some of them are watching now that tune out unless there's a guy on screen doing something, and Very you know, true. guys guys that have like gun channels, they will <laughs> they will tell you unless they are physically actively shooting the gun. People tune out. They can be giving the greatest education in the world, um, the greatest product review ever. And I, I saw one guy that actually said, "Don't tune out. I'm going to go on the range, and you can watch <laughs> me shoot." Um, <laughs> but I got to tell you about this. So there are people that have a, sh a very short attention span, and unless they see somebody actually shooting balls in, um, you lose them. So just you know, my two cents. And um, yeah, yeah, but uh, At, okay. As you're telling me that, I'm looking for something to put in the background. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think that's a great idea. I would love to feature it on the show. And I, that, you know how you know how I am about things where I'm kind of um, particular, uh, but sure. In many ways, I don't care if I lose those people. Because they're not going to be good players anyway. If they can't sit still long enough to listen to us talk about ways they can improve their game, um, <laughs> right. but from a business standpoint, from a viewer, you know, get your subscriptions up and your view time. That's where it really hits. But um, yeah, people that can't sit still long enough to to listen to why we want you to do what you're supposed to be doing. They're not going to be good players anyway, and that's not my demographic. My demographic is people that want to improve their game, and I'll 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 sacrifice four or five thousand, you know, um, bangers for a few hundred people that are serious about their game. So that's that's my feeling about it. Oh, amen. All right. So, oh, uh, that being said, I actually have. In, now that I got it set up, I know that you um, wanted the general, the great old general, always uh, on the attack. Uh, I tried to get some more clips with him, but actually I think you've seen these. But uh, just to switch it up, I know Chuck here wanted to review this this clip of of many. So it's been a while, but I love the I love the meme. So it's, that in itself is uh, is almost worth it. Let me make sure the sounds on. Can I ask what pronouns you go by? What pronouns would that be? It's 2023, so. What business is it of yours? What my gender is? Friendo? Well, I need to go to a genderqueer protest. Mm -hmm. Genderqueer protest? Yes, sir. What time do you protest? Now, it starts now. No, it's not a time. What time do you protest? Generally around dark, at dark. How many genders are there? Sir? You're a bit deaf, aren't you? I said, how many genders are there? Oh, you're somewhere around 930. I'd say around 930. Are you mentally ill? Why would you be saying that? You'll get canceled. 
Don't give a shit. Yeah, I picked this one out because of the. Yeah, pick this one out. So Chuck, uh, I picked this. You're one actually out. paying it. <laughs> okay, yeah, go on, go on. I'm sorry. I actually picked this one out due to the the, the cue ball control. Now, a-, a ball, you have like a lot of leeway as far as you know. You know, you really all got to do is worry about making shots to a certain point. Um, to where that point was, to where you got on the eight ball, uh, that's where you lost position. So. uh each shot, you know, you, you want to have a plan. If it works out or not, you know, you know, it may not work out. But I always have a plan. I always have a um, a pre-shot routine also. Uh, you're just going into each shot without having any kind of pre-shot routine. And the thing about a pre-shot routine is it's your own. It doesn't have to be what somebody else says. Yeah. Like, like my, my pre-shot routine – I don't know if you can pull mine up. Go ahead and pull mine up if you want to. Uh, the the long video with the three sixteen or whatever the yeah you don't timestamp yeah, yeah just where I timestamped it yeah okay cool all right so they don't go on there. this is me playing my buddy Ro- Roopster uh, Roopster which we should have on the show soon hopefully all things considered shout out to Roopster follow his channel if you haven't already awesome. absolutely. Now this is a break and run I do, but my pre- my pre shot routine you really can't tell it, but if you'll if you'll watch you can tell each shot has about ten to fifteen seconds between each shot, mm-hmm. so I'm I'm already keeping a certain time. Now I'm taking you know, a, a few seconds to look at the uh, the layout real quick, but between each shot you, you can literally almost count ten to fifteen seconds, um, but that's my my pre-shot routine myself. Now, you know, if you chalk your stick or, you know, how many times or, or whatever during your pre-shot routine, keep that same routine. Like I said, you can literally count. And I, I'm i being specific with my cue ball. I'm not, like, pointing around the table, but, you know. Yeah. Like, here, I, I kind of put myself in the middle of the table. That way I had options. Uh, now, you can see I got the four ball uh, in the corner if I want it. Uh, Beautiful, nice, straight. Yep. But I'm thinking about the the complete run out. I'm not thinking about making balls. So I'm going to take this more difficult shot uh, of the combination than the side. Okay. Uh, just just because it's easier from this area to get to that because all these other balls are blocking the other shots back the other way. Hmm. Um, so I'm just lining it up there. But I gotta make sure I get a good shot on the two ball next. Yeah, that's the key I'll... with these combinations. I tell people all the time when you shoot a combination shot, if you're not sure where that original ball is going to go, you're in trouble. Or you get shape on a ball that's not involved with the combination. You can see Chuck knows the direction that the two ball is going and he played he played shape on it you know knowing yes. where it's going to go so um you know that's one of the things i also if you don't mind chuck i wanted to point out a couple of things that that chuck didn't mention um and these are the kinds of things that good players do that you know or he, he mentioned the time yeah, he said yes. 15 seconds between shots if you the one of the one of the um the factors, one of the uh, traits of a good player versus a weaker player is the amount of time they take between shots. A weaker player takes about a third the amount of time than a good player does. Watch any match with a shot clock, the best in the world. You'll hear yeah. that chime where the shot clock is running out. There's <laughs> only 10 seconds left. You'll hear it on a lot of shots. They've taken all that time. And they've yes. already looked at the table, and they see the table faster than the weaker players, but they're using up all that time. So that's a very good point, Chuck, about um, about the time you take. But one of the things that a lot of people probably didn't pick up on is Chuck's eyes are always on the table. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of activity around him, and he's not distracted by it. Also, his eyes stay adjusted to the lighting on the table. Um, people looking around, especially in bars and stuff, 
it's such a bad idea. Your eyes take time to adjust to the change in light when you're looking around. So, um, you know, just a subtle thing that a lot Oof. of people don't notice. So nice run. Now, Chuck. yeah, very nice run. Now, um, in my defense, it, in, uh, what I'm going to do is I'll pull up one of the my long form videos. You got to remember, I, I do edit for time. So like my pre shot is pretty much edited out of the shorts. Right. You know, but um, what I'll do is uh, uh, let me see. Let me switch this here. All right, so this is this is actually uh, this is going to be let me get up here for a second. Okay, all right, let me start. This is the run I want to start with. Oh, there you go. You guys see that? I hit the one. That's an automatic loss. Someone's in the comments going to light me up for that. Well, it depends on where you're playing. You're playing right, APA. Well, that's see. not a not even a foul. Yeah. Oh, and I missed that fucking shot. Yeah. Not even a right man. clip. All right, so yeah, th this actually kind of tells you this is what my routine is. If if I'm what like I make sure that there's se eight uh, seven on the table, seven uh, solids, and then my my goal is to, to practice running out. You were gonna say something, Chuck? Let me. Uh... Yeah, go back to the three ball there before you shoot it. Oh, the miss. Yeah. Nothing more fun than playing your misses repeatedly. I know, right? Yeah, that's this is what hell, a preview of hell. But this is where you're going to learn. This is where you're really going to learn. <laughs> you shot that in under two seconds. Yeah, you didn't. I uh, sure did. No pre-shot. Like you said, no pre-shot. No pre you did what I, I call, you know, everybody calls taking the shot for granted. You, you see the, you know, you see the shots makeable and, and basically yeah. you kind of just forget to aim. 1,001, 1,002. Not even okay. two. You're, you're on <laughs> a like three second, eight. Yeah, you're on a three second <laughs> shot clock. And good mm. point, Chuck. Um, and one of the reasons why, you know, there's many more, but one of the reasons why low intermediate players and intermediate players don't get shape is because they're thinking about putting their ball in the pocket where the better player is thinking about shape that you can't possibly be playing very specific. You know, you're playing a little bit of zone here, maybe a lot of zone because the balls are so makeable, yeah. but um, good player is like, no, I'm not going to get on this seven. I'm going to get on this seven on the left-hand side so that I can come up for the five ball, you know, not just where it's makeable. So where you stopped here, I'm already yeah. shooting a back cut on that seven. If that's the way I decide that I want to, I want to get there. So it's not just, you know, getting there. The the one good thing that you did there when it comes to playing zone, I think Chuck kind of mentioned it in, in his video, um, yeah. where, where he just played the middle of the table. I will play some zone where I have multiple shots, like um, particularly in straight pool where I have my choice of three balls here. So now I can decide how I'm going to run out. So some there are times, but I'm still playing very specific area. I'm, I'm putting that cue ball in a spot the size of a playing card so that I have those options. But um, oh, yeah. Yeah, taking the shot for granted, Chuck's absolutely right, happens all the time. I still do it sometimes. It Every, happens. Yes, yeah, everybody does. We, we've all missed that shot. Because pool makes us lazy. I, I, I'm, I'm going to make that into a T-shirt. Nobody steal that shit. Um, <laughs> pool, pool makes us lazy. It really does. And <laughs> I, I have students. Yeah. I'm doing Zoom calls sometimes with guys who they're in the gym four times a week. They run marathons. They do all this, all this working out, and they won't walk four feet to get the short cue off the wall or the bridge. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Are you are you kidding me? One guy, I made him move his cues because he, he yeah. bought a brand new diamond table. He bought new cues. He bought new balls. Bought everything. And in one section, he was up against the wall, but his cues were at the other end of the room, and he wouldn't go get the short cue. I'm like, how about we move the short cues down here against the wall 
that's up against the table <laughs> and you don't have to go anywhere but <clears throat> but yeah we get lazy we get rushed we think we we've got it you know um how many times you do a drill where you know you got seven balls you need to make you make the first six and then you dog the last one because you think you got oh i got it now yes. yeah no that's that's, <laughs> that's, that's yeah, what you, story that's of my life <laughs> I put out I put out a, a video oh, yeah. uh, I put out a video a couple a couple years ago actually, uh, and it's about uh, thinking three balls ahead and what that really means. Mm-hmm. Okay, everybody's always heard okay, think three balls ahead. Everybody's always always heard that, right? But people think okay, I'm gonna put this ball there, that ball there, and this ball here. But we're not talking about object balls. We're talking about cue ball position. Mm-hmm. Where do you want the cue ball for your first shot to be for your second shot so you can get line for the third shot? And I actually show an example of where, you know, I just shoot a stop shot and I'm already out of position. So, you know, I can't get on my third ball. I can shoot my second ball, but my third ball I'm out of position for already from the right. very first shot. So, uh, so basically I did do a draw shot and get a, put an angle on my other ball so I can get on the third ball. So it's not about, you know, okay, I'm putting the one here, the two there. And the three there. It's about where your cue balls will be each shot. That's, that's what a, that's what you got to understand. That's a very good point. Yeah, people think it's, um, hey Brian, do you know where all these balls are going to go after the break? Of course I know where they're all going to go, <laughs> but I've got to put the cue ball in those spots as well. And I like your point about the, um, you know, not just the three balls ahead. And and here I shot a stop shot and I'm on the wrong side of the ball. Most runs, people tell me every week somebody tells me, I got down to the last two balls and then I, I missed. Yeah, you your run probably broke down on your second or third shot, not on your fifth or sixth shot. On the second or third shot, you did something that prevented you from running out. You go back to the first video. I mean, don't you have, don't have to actually do it, but the first video that we watched Chuck shoot that run, he had a straight in shot on the four. How many people are going to shoot that combination when they got a straight in shot on the four? Right. I, I would have taken a four. Like a exactly. Piece of shit. But he yeah, takes yeah, no, totally. the four. Now he's got to work overtime to get back on those two balls. And he he recognized that. Yes, he's got the skills to get on them, but why make it difficult or impossible? And um, a lot of people don't get that, that we're not shooting the easiest ball on the table. We're shooting the ones that have to happen. Uh, one of the videos that I will provide for you uh, nice. for for an upcoming you know, podcast, uh, it's an eight ball run, and I have all the balls except for two at one end of the table where the cue ball is. And I actually get ready to shoot one. All right. But I opt to take a long six foot shot down table. And mm. people lost their mind. Oh, what kind of pattern <laughs> is that? I don't know. Why would you shoot the two? No, I shot the two because I know that I'm not going to get back on it later. Right. I know this where the, the, the low level player, first off, they think they're going to get on it. You know, I, you know, <laughs> Me. you know, my Never. joke about I was going to get on it. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, now you're getting on it with the rack because yeah. you never got on it. So, <laughs> but yeah, yep. people lost their mind. Oh, you went all the way down table. You had three shots down here. Yes. But that ball, I know is going to be almost impossible to get on. So I'm going all the way down there to come all the way back here. So now I can run, run these. And the same, it was the same process as, as Chuck shooting that. That combination, you know, somebody is going, oh, why, why are you shooting the combination? You got this four ball here. <laughs> yeah, no, that's and that's yeah. what they sound like in my head, by the way. Um, well, <laughs> that's how they actually I, sound. <laughs> yeah. When I think about them, that's what I hear. <laughs> it just got well, I, actually, right. I actually break and run the next track too, and it's actually even harder. Uh, I did. Okay, back. So let me switch. <clears throat> Let me but switch. One thing I'll switch I will, it out. Yeah, one thing I will mention that, you know, I don't care. Say me and Brian were playing, right? And let's just play, say we're playing eight ball. He was on the eight, and I had three balls left. 
I don't care if the balls are wide open. I'm still looking at the best pattern to shoot to, to make it the easiest on myself. I'm not just going to start. You're stuck. You know, I'm not just going to shoot a ball because it's easy. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say, okay, I'm going to find actually the hardest shot to get on and go ahead and get on that ball first with the ball in hand. Yep. And then, then do shots. It. Yeah. Uh, but I see a lot of people, man, let's put a ball up and start shooting. And I'm like, I'm going to tell you a secret, okay? I was watching, I watch people, amateurs play a lot. And there'll be one ball, they'll have ball in hand, they'll have one ball at the end of the table. And all their balls at the other, one end of the table. They'll shoot all the balls at the end of the table and they can't get back to that last one. Mm -hmm. They have ball in hand, they could have right. shot the one down down table and got shape on any of the balls down down the other side and, and ran out. Yeah. And it's, that one yeah. ball, that one decision cost them that game. Yeah, that is, is exactly what I was just describing. They and it's amazing. <laughs> they got ball in hand, got two problem shots. And used a ball in hand to shoot a ball in the side pocket that they could have made shoot from the on the table. Yeah, I'm like, you could have made that <laughs> yeah. from your dining room, and you you waste your ball in hand on that, and you got a right, ball right. on the short rail at the other end. So yeah, I remember and, I told you I yeah. told you I had a pre-shot routine, but I'm not I'm not over the fact that I will take a minute to study a table or study a problem. Uh, like here, yeah. I got a really tough shot. My cue ball ended up on the on the rail there so i do take you know about at least a good minute here to, to see what i want to do what did you make on the break uh six ball on the side and the okay. corner um so really the only good shot i have is that that 10 ball stripe and uh, down there on the short rail yeah mm. uh, but i do know that if i do make that the cue ball is heading towards the uh the 211 right there in the side. yeah that's what i was thinking that that's not a bad shot because it also it puts you on the 15. If you don't hit the cluster, you would end up on the 15. Yeah, I do, is, I do actually get on the 15 after that. Yeah. Good shot. Oh, wow. Yeah. Woo! All right. Now I this, swing and miss. This where it gets kind of funny because I, I got to hit the, the 15 real thin. And I end up getting a kiss, a kiss on the 8. And it kind of kind of messes my world a bit. <laughs> I have to rethink a little bit. Um, so I'm also I'm also stressed out too. And now I'm over to seven too. Yeah. Uh, I ended up I ended up cutting the twelve all the way down uh, in between the fourteen and nine. All wow. Jack jacked up uh, over to seven. Yeah. You can't really see it because I'm in the way, but I, I'm telling River I'm like twelve all. He said twelve all. I said yeah. <laughs> Said you said twelve ball, right? I said yeah. You hear me? Tell him? He's like 12 yeah, ball, yeah, right? yeah. I get, I get twelve ball. Here. Sit back down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's, right. like, there's like no no room for that to go by. I'm yeah. like, talking about you. I did that first. But you know, I'm Avoid still taking you. time with it. Uh, yeah. But when, once I make up my mind, I sit, I keep myself still, and I concentrate on my shot only. Yeah. So now I got the nine fourteen. You know, I wish we could see the path of that ball because a lot of people also can't comprehend the fact that you can hit that long rail on the way down yeah. the table and still make that ball in the pocket. Well, I did. It yeah. did. Uh, it did kind of rattle the pocket a little bit. But yeah, but you, yeah, you can hit the long rail. People, people. That's another one they go nuts over. Uh, uh, that wouldn't go on my table. Well, it wouldn't go if you were shooting it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you hit the rail first. What kind of no, no. That's that You're slip. shooting it, it doesn't go. I shoot it, it goes. It's the same shot. I, I love that. It wouldn't go on my table. Well, probably not if you were shooting. <laughs> oh man, what a hell of a run there. That Dose. was a very nice run. And it all came down to that shot going down table. Very nice. But you see, I didn't shoot any shot without thinking about it. Uh, I had mentioned before I had seen some of yours, uh, Felix, where you know you'll just you'll just shoot a ball and wherever whatever happens happens. Uh, and the high level, we don't do that. I mean, even if uh, uh, we have a tough shot, you know, we just don't slam them around, see what happens. We still have a plan. It don't always work, but we have a plan. Yeah. Right. Now I'm uh yeah it's it's like the constant uh battle in my head 
where it's like this is this is always my thing. There's either I underthink it or I overthink it, right? And I'll think myself out of a shot, and then sometimes I'll try to go into instinct mode, and that backfires. So like, yeah, that's definitely to your point where it's like there's just you know there's the routine, and the, the routine that I usually or that I should do is chalk. While I'm chalking, look at the table, take a walk around, you know what I mean? Take, look at all the balls, and then, you know, make sure that that you're still in your, that my three-ball rotation or my three-ball plan is still in motion or whatnot. But, you know, it's like, so like here I kind of, I'm doing my little routine here. And but, it's, you know. it's tough as you're learning the game to stay in that three that three-ball routine because you have so many, you have so many failures that you don't you get out of the habit of doing it you know it's like yes. um it's like planning your budget but then you're broke at the end of the month anyway like why did i bother uh, you know? <laughs> so, right um so yeah i i can see how a lot of players get frustrated they're like i i i planned it out because i can tell just from from working with you for you know so long the difference in the way you plan the wreck versus you know what you've done in the past but it you still there you can have a great plan and you know then it all falls apart because you you know you get out of line but that's that's where you know plan b and plan c come in so that was a nice that was a nice run but oh, thank um, you thank you yeah thank like you. like Go mike back. says everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the face until so they get punched um, in the face yeah. So, um, <laughs> previous rag, I got something I want to say about it. Yeah. Wait, wait. I'm sorry. Say that again, Chuck. You want me to run it back? Yeah. Go back to that previous rack. Um, I want to tell you what I liked about what you did there. Go, go back. Um, okay. uh, that was a very good shot, by the way, though. That one. go back about 20 All seconds. Right. Yeah. About, okay, about here's good. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, you, you get a good draw yeah. on this shot, by the way. Um, yeah. Because I think it was a draw, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Surprise me. <laughs> yeah. Now the question was, where you, where you, in, you, I, I assume because it came back so far, you were intending to draw it. Um, but you put yeah. yourself on yeah. two different balls by by getting to this zone, whether it was intentional or not. Yeah, that was it was. You were going it was. It was. That was a very. The, yeah. This is what I, this is what I like about what you did because you have a shot on the nine now. But the good thing is you yeah. left that for later. Now, seeing where the, the 10 ball was, the last shot you take, uh, I can't remember if it was 15 or not, you should draw it back a little bit further just to get a little bit more. You, you did get a shot on the 10 after because you came off the, the 7, I think. But, yes, yeah, this ball here, you should have drew it back a little bit further. That way you been had less of an angle on the 9. But, you know, you didn't come back and look at it. You know, you should have took a second, looked at the nine, and see exactly where you wanted to be. Yeah, you were going at a pretty rapid pace. But you still, you made a nice recovery here. But um, but that's another, that's a really good point because a lot of times, a lot of times, players, we've talked about this, they misplay pocket hangers. You know, you want to you break down the run of an of a intermediate player? Give them two pocket hangers. It, <laughs> seriously, seriously, they're done. They're done because they don't get shaped on. They don't get shaped on the pocket hanger, and they don't get shaped from the pocket hanger. There is a, there is a skill about it, um, that a lot of people just simply, they never learn it because they think they can make the ball from anywhere on the table, and they can. But it's the, it's the, um, getting the next shot. So That's where good. it comes down is to, uh, you know, no matter what shot you're shooting, you always want to have a plan, a thought. Um, like I said, yeah, you know, you know, me and Brian know we need to get me to get a fuller hit on that nine to come come straighter back towards the eight. Yeah, you're Not, on the um, you're on the five second shot clock here. You can tell. I try. I think I forced myself to slow down finally at some point, but. Yeah, I get to the point where I I can't do the dollar bill trick that that uh, Chuck was telling me about the other day, or like you know whatever you want to or, or the you want to get your ball on the playing card, you know. Right. It's like I can get it into like these small 
quadrants. Like, uh, you know, I want to get it, it somewhere here. Right, and that's, <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. Or I want to get it somewhere it's, it's here, so I stay really, out. This happens. Really bad habit. To the ta you know. table. Yeah. If I or see if you stay on this half of the table, I'll have I'll have uh, choices here or whatever. You know, I guess up until here. Yeah. Well, if you yeah. put a dollar or a playing card on the table, it actually gives you a target. Remember last time I talked to you about the the focus, and I put a a dot on a piece of paper. And now your eyes are drawn to it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you can pinpoint, you know, you know. Me and Brian, we can actually yeah. sit at the table. I've actually got a buddy of mine, Ruben. I was playing over his house, and I actually uh, pointed at the spot uh, where I wanted the cue ball, and he put an X there on the shore. Uh, and I go three rails and park it right there on that X. Um, you know, yeah. But we can, you know, we don't have, we don't need a playing card to put it there. We just, you know. But yeah. after, it just helps you, you know. But I said, don't do something crazy. I said, when you put a card down, put it down in the natural pass of the cue ball. Yeah, you, know, you don't want to. Yeah. yeah, not somewhere you can't get to. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. But, you know, a, a good it, little trick. Play where it lands. <laughs> a, a good trick. Um, and I learned this really just a, just a few years ago. Every table's got blemishes on it. Unless, it's, unless it was just covered, it's got blemishes on it. And you can use those spots as targets. So you're not going to physically put a playing card on the table, but yeah, you can you can use a spot on the table, it, you know, from a you know a hot spot or whatever it is, and say I've got to get to the left of this or to the right of this, or I need to stop on this spot. Um, you're going to be very specific. Now, I will grant you, and I. You know, I'm probably the only person <laughs> with a YouTube channel that takes responsibility for some of the bad habits that amateur players have just from watching me. But um, what a lot of people don't recognize, and I'm sure this is the same thing with Chuck. I'm, I'm going to speak for you. We are shooting at a different pace when it's very important than what you see us do yes. on YouTube. Okay. If we shot, if I shot on YouTube, the way I do in a match or if it's some money or something involved or even playing one of my, my students. Um, right. I, I shoot at about a third the speed. Okay. Um, if I shot on YouTube at that speed, people would be tuning out pretty, pretty damn quick. Cause it'd be like, you know, this guy has a shot of ball and you know, the, he shot three balls in the last 60 seconds. But, um, you know, people see us shooting very quickly, and and you know that's that's YouTube speed, because we know people have a short attention span, so um, so yeah, you got to slow everything down. You're gonna have better position. You're gonna make more. Yeah, shots. I messed that so up. We're gonna make royally. this bank. We're gonna make this bank. It looks out of line to me. Run it, run it. Let's see. It looks short. No, <laughs> sorry, Bobbity Boo. I'm, I'm going to bet you came <laughs> short. <laughs> I'm going to bet I was, you came short on that. I'm going to get into what I was talking to, to Felix about. What I want to talk about the other day was uh, the attitude at, at at the game, your game table, whatever. Um, okay, if you are playing your match and you miss a ball, take ownership of that miss. I missed that ball. You, you know, you can't just say, oh, this guy lit a cigarette over here or this person walked by. And, you know, you see me you know, at the, the pool hall, my eyes was on the table. You know, so if you, you're not going to get any better unless you own up to your own mistakes. Right. You, if, hey, I missed this ball. Uh, know what I did. Next time I'll, I'll do better. Uh, yeah. but at the same time, Go back, sit down, and just because everybody everybody misses. I don't care if you're Shane Van Boney, he misses. I mean, it happens. Uh, so the best in the world, they, they miss easy shots. Uh, but the difference is, when they get back to the table, they take care of business. They don't, you know, dwell on it. They don't get mad mm -hmm. because you know if you watch people, Brian. I know, I know you've seen people before. You know, you know you got them as soon as they. Man, I missed that shot. I can't believe I missed that shot. Oh yeah, you know, that person over there, man. It's just. I can't believe, you know, 
they walked in front of my shot in the end. Yeah. You know you've already got the game won as soon as it's <laughs> And and if I'm playing for money, I'll really milk it. I'm like, you're right. That guy is very distracting. <laughs> Did you see that girl with the big ass next to him? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, to, to I, totally have yeah, it. Th this table is not is not friendly for you. You're yeah, having a bad yeah. day. I'll I'll really agree with you. You're you know, absolutely yeah, right. You know, it, it might not be level. I think you're right. I don't think it is yeah, level. Yeah, yeah. It, it did roll a little weird. Yeah, I always said if I if I if I was ever playing Earl Strickland, I'd be like that guy up in the stand seems to clear his yeah. his throat every time you're trying to shoot. Yeah, what is that, Earl? <laughs> But at the same time, at the same time, this person's getting upset. You know, that's when I start bringing on more safeties, and I play. Oh, I yeah. run out. I'll, I'll play defense, and you know he'll miss the ball. I run out, so it's just adding to the fuel. So, um, oh yeah, like I was playing. Wow. This guy, I was playing this guy, and I had ball in hand, and I had a cluster there. So I take probably a good minute and a half, two minutes to try to figure out what I'm doing. Right. Right. And, you know, we, we weren't on the timer or nothing, and he just got. Freaking pissed because I took that much time. And I ended up missing the shot because I'm trying to break these balls out. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, dude, what's the matter? I missed anyway. But he couldn't play no more that night. You know, he couldn't make a two ball run to save oh. his life because he was so oh, upset. Yeah. Now, I'm going to tell you a thing to go along with that, too. While you're playing on the table, you shoot at your pace. Like Brian and say, you're going to mirror the people. You know, if they're shooting fast, they won't want you to shoot fast. Yeah. But the thing is, if you were – I'm not really a slow shooter. I, the pace you see me around the table uh, there, but you'll see if I have a problem area, I don't mind taking a minute to look at it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, while I'm shooting, you know, they're yeah. within 15 seconds of shot. So shoot your pace. So if you got somebody running around the table, if they have to slow down for you to you – know, if that's their kryptonite, you know, that's their problem. Yeah. So, because you got you know, when they're at the table and they're shooting fast or slow, you have to, you know, wait for them no matter what. Yeah, that's um, you know, it transcends pool. You know, think about other sports. Think about a sport like basketball. You know, if 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 they got the size, we're going to be running and gunning. You know, we're going to be a fast break team that day. And um, whatever, you know, I I tell people all the time, the key to victory is doing whatever your opponent doesn't want to do if they they play fast you play slow they play slow step up the pace a little bit a lot of times people will mirror you you know i always talk about mirroring other people but you can get other people to mirror you and um so that's a that's a very good point um chuck said something earlier about um you know, embracing, well, I don't think you, I'm not sure exactly how you said it, but taking, taking responsibility for your miss and, um, you know, don't let it get into your head. Uh, you got to have a short memory, you know, when something bad goes, happens, even when it happens back to back. I have, I've had so many people say, oh, I'm having a bad day or, you know, or I can't make a ball today. And, you know, you miss three balls in a row. And it's, and the funny thing is it's, they're the only person that's surprised. It's like if you ever, I'm sure, I'm sure everybody has seen it on league <laughs> night. Guy misses a shot, seven foot shot straight down table. He misses. He's like, oh damn! And nobody on his team is surprised that he missed it because he sucks. He seems to be the only one that is surprised that he missed this shot. Oh, oh, oh. I'm like it's, it's always that guy. Um, Chuck also made another very good point I need to stress. Uh, and if you guys haven't noticed, this is the channel where I do my venting. Um, I, I, I have a student. Oh, yeah. I have a student that said to me the, just the other day that his coach told him he was shooting too slow, that he needed to speed up. I have heard so much bad advice that people are getting on league night. It's unbelievable. And that is one of the worst things that your coach, who's just some guy, let's, let's qualify that. He's just some guy. <laughs> all right. He's not trained. 
He doesn't make a living coaching people. He might be a six or seven. Who cares what his rank is? Just because you are good at something doesn't make you a good coach. I'm good at basketball. I'm the worst basketball coach ever. Okay? I just don't have the patience to, to teach it right. But he's just some guy, and now he wants you to shoot at his pace because you're taking too long? That's that's just insane. So, um, yeah, yeah the, I just the coaching, the, the stuff that I hear people – their coaches tell them, um, don't let these guys try to turn you into them and don't don't have guys speeding you up and slowing you down. All right. I, I don't even want to call them the coach. I want to call him the team captain. It's the team captain. He's the one filled out the form and now he's in charge of the team. So yeah, yeah. There, there's no there's no test, there's no vetting, there's no um um interviews for the job. He's just some guy. Okay, so um, just now, keep that I'll, in mind. Well, my problem. I'll, I'll coach, type. Say that again. Problem, my problem when I, when I was would coach people, and I would tell them you know certain things to do. They would try to implement it in their game right that second, and it wouldn't work mm. for them. And I right. tell them you've got to make <laughs> your make your changes during practice. Exactly. But the problem with practice is okay. You want to practice this so much. Uh, for example, uh, I used to hold my hands uh, kind of like, kind of like that there. Yeah, if I show, let me see. Yeah, okay. we can see it. Um, which wasn't bad, but I had an older guy come tell me, okay, and told me the right way to hold my hand. You know, like you know, flat on the table. Stop throwing up stuff. gang signs. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, All right. It, it took me a while to get. So my I'm sorry. Hands I'm sorry, Chuck. It took, my while, it took me a while to get my hands comfortable, but once I did that, my game jumped up. So you've got to practice it so much that you don't have to think about it. Right. I don't have to think about my stroke, my stance, where I'm standing, where I'm holding, how I'm, I'm stroking. Oh, I got to go, uh, you know, out, hold it for two seconds, and then go, you know, you want it to be your thing. Uh, practice so much to where you don't have to think about it. You just lay down, yeah. you, uh, you know, I'm not worried about where I'm putting my feet because I, I I know when I get down, I'm planning where I need to be at. Right. I don't have to think about it. So you got all this, these thoughts going in your head. Okay, my coach told me to do this, uh, so I got to do this his, his way. And then you're not even thinking about your shot because you're thinking about you know exactly the, the training and whatnot. You know? so, Yogi Berra, I I quote Yogi Yogi Berra at least five six times a month. You can't hit and think at the same time. So. <laughs> Yeah, some of the <laughs> that's the thing. He's the best. When, when you get yeah. coached, when you get coached during a match, all right, you you have to decide what was this advice? Are they teaching or coaching? And there's a difference because I am not putting you in a position to learn something. During the match, because of what Chuck said, if you're thinking about it, you you automatically can't do it for the money. Okay, so it's not the time to teach somebody slow down, speed up, whatever. That's you know, no. If they are taking too long or they're overthinking the shot or or anything like that, is a practice session type thing. Why are you going to ruin somebody's game? Every I constantly hear from guys. Guys left the league. I've had guys that left the league or left their 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 team because their coach would call timeouts and they're like, I know more than this guy about how to run these balls and he's calling a timeout in the middle of my pattern here. And um, yeah, one of my students, he went from three to six in um, APA in a very short period of time, one MVP and all of this. And it took weeks before now everybody knows if you go from three to six you just joined the league you went from three to six and let's just call it um 12 weeks you probably came wow. in okay. as a four or five all right you didn't you didn't improve that way you were yes. a four or five the algorithm just hadn't caught up with you yet but right that makes he sense had to, yeah it was after he won mvp that his coach who is a lesser player than hell stopped trying to teach him He's like, I got this guy telling, giving me advice, and 
I'm playing chess and he's playing checkers. He's telling me, you know, how to how to play a, a, a king's gambit. I'm like, it, it, yeah, it, just just be careful. Yeah, you know, I now, I have I have received when I was learning the game, um, and I also came up. I was playing. I was a teenager playing grown ups, and I had a lot right. of grown ups who I know intentionally gave me some bad advice to try to mess me wow. up. Um, cause that, that happened back then. <laughs> okay. I still laugh at some of it. Um, but, uh, and I have, I, I have at least a couple of times in my life given somebody bad advice and, um, and gone back to them and, and apologize. What I told you about this, you know, my cousin used to have a, a pause on his stroke. Before anybody was pausing on their backswing, he yeah. was doing it. He was doing it decades ago. And I coached it out of him. I said, you got a glitch in your stroke. Nobody was doing it. And then all of a sudden, everybody was doing it. And I went to him. I'm like, Stan, you know, I may have been absolutely wrong. That might have helped you. We should have analyzed it to see. But how many people go back and say, I was wrong about that? <laughs> yeah. yeah right. It's human, yeah, human nature all the time. But um, yeah. I will tie this into my APA game this Wednesday. So this Wednesday they put me up against the five, and as my little head header here, I am a four still. You know, and I may be for the next five years. Got the way I'm playing, but uh, they 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 put me up against the five, and in that situation, for the people who don't know, he has to win four games. I only have to win three, right? Mm -hmm. I'm down three to nothing. <laughs> I'm down three to nothing. And one, I took some of your advice from last week, which was like, uh, uh, you know, Chuck, if, if you didn't know, like I ended up coming in uh, into the money in a tournament with my team before. And, and you said, and uh, Brian was like, well, you now have that in your bank. You now have this moment that you can tap into when you come up against these hard moments. You know, and you're up against the wall, and 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 you can tap into these situations to, I guess, give you the heads up, like, hey, I can do this. I've been worse before this out of the other. And then to Chuck's point, and even to give credit to my captain, you know, uh, he 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 was pretty much running on me pretty solidly. I try to make things happen. I'm just not there, and then I slow down the pace. You know, um, I started playing safeties, and in fact, like yeah, the fourth game, again, I'm down three nothing. I just start safety and safety and safety, 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 and then you start seeing this thing where it's not um, the guy isn't like, gosh, golly darn it to heck every every single stroke, but he's you could tell when he misses, he's slamming his hand, he's doing like you know what I mean, he's doing the silent protest in a way, you know what I mean, like it's all it's all. Um, uh, mannerisms and uh, and gestures, you could tell he's getting frustrated. Mm -hmm. And then I was able to come back and and you know get to three, you know win three in a row. I ended up winning that game, breaking my losing streak uh, uh, for league night. So so that's definitely uh, definitely I guess to both of y'all's points, these guys knows these guys know what they're talking about. Well, well, when, I, do. when I when I did do APA, um, I'd always tell my coach, "Don't tell me what the uh, what the race is." I don't mm. want to know because as soon as they say, okay, you only got to win one more game, you know, I'm sitting there, oh, wow, I got to, you know, <laughs> I either get too lazy or I'm like, you know, too nervous. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I always tell them, don't, don't tell me what the race is. Don't tell me because I don't want to, as far as I'm concerned, I'm playing Shane Van Boney in my head. You know, this right. person I miss is yeah. on, on run running table. So with that mindset, you know, because you're already thinking, okay, uh, you guys are gonna think two things. Okay, this guy's gotta to go to four, I gotta to go to three. Uh it's cause so much better than me. Uh or you're gonna get lazy and be like, you know, I only have to win three games. So yeah, you know, yeah. I would tell my coach, I don't, I don't even want to know the race. Right. Just when my, my game's done, just say, Okay, you want you it's over. I'm good because yeah. you know, anything you're thinking about, you know, in, in your head, you know, during your, your match is uh could tell you off. Did you get yeah. that uh did you get that text I sent you, Seth? Oh, just now. Let me take a look. Hold on. Uh, I did. I think I. Yeah, 
that. I got all, I got a timestamp. Yeah. And this is me, me and my buddy Ruben right. again. We're playing on a Bronswick with three and three quarter inch pockets. Now I want to tell you something about a tight pocket table. If you have any flaw in your stroke, you'll you'll know it. What is that triple shim three and three quarter inch? It, it, it is crazy. I'm talking about those pockets were like that. I mean, yeah. Uh, but There's a gold, what a gold was the, uh What was the timestamp? I'm looking. I'm, I have the, the. Oh yeah. Classic gold crown. Oh, table. Sorry, we're breaking up there. Triple shim, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, two two forty eight. Are you talking about the safe at two oh six? Well, two forty eight. Okay, okay, I got you right here. All right. Um, actually, uh, All right. rewind. Uh, you guys 20. can see right. Let me rewind it about thirty seconds from there. Rewind 20 seconds. Do about 30. Okay. A little more? Go about, yeah, go back a little bit more. A little bit more. Uh, I had 30 seconds to be perfect. All right, this, this is good. Uh, I have 30 more seconds. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm trying to get to the, the first part of the rack. Let's see if you can scroll by. Just see where you can see the first part of the rack. You can just do it from there. That's fine. I yeah. made one shot aside from there. Um, yeah, he ends up breaking it, but he breaks dry. And you, can you see how tight the pockets are? Uh, yeah those are my favorite tables i don't know why there's things i don't like about the gold crown but um like i don't like the metal plates on the ends because i end up rubbing my cue against them on certain shots but those are the tables i learned to play on i i always feel at home on those well uh, what i'm trying to get at on this table is uh on a tight pocket table like this your, your position's actually got to be even more perfect yeah, um, you don't want to put any unnecessary yes. spell ball at all. So most of these shots you see are just maybe a, a tip up top, a tip up left. Uh, uh, yeah, you can't cheat the pocket, and people don't recognize. They think you know a lot of amateurs think that the um, the problem with tight pockets is putting the ball in the pocket. It's not just that your position play gets compromised too. Because you can't use the pocket the same way you would on a on a more forgiving table. So basically, I mean, I'm trying to have good cue ball control, but it's also you got to make your shot and just take what the table gives you sometimes too. Mm -hmm. uh, like I wanted yes. to get on, I wanted to get on a two on the side, but you know, uh, So what, what is yeah, that? That's the seven right here. Is that the what you're going yeah, for? Yeah, seven. Yeah, I think I do. Yeah. Seven. I think I do seven, two, three, four. And this is that one I told you where I have a net. Uh, he puts an X where I put the. Uh, where I should have stick where I want the cue ball at. Can you go back five seconds? I want to point something out. I constantly yell at people about this. Stop right there. You see how Chuck has put the bridge on the table and put his hand on it. Yes. People do this. When you can put the bridge down on the table, put it on the table. Don't float two apparatuses in the <laughs> midair. They're like this. I'm like, dude, this hard pool is hard enough. Now you got two things in the in midair. Coming a um, puppet master. Sarah. Yeah. If you don't have to shoot over a ball, put the bridge down on the table. Put your hand on it. I'm so glad I I saw that. Well, because, see, I, also, I also have the, the bridge at an angle. That way, I put more attention on the, the yeah. stick. I don't oh. have to, Yeah, you there look is, at an right. angle. You want wow. To, you know, Knowledge nugget. That Wow. Yeah, that makes all the sense in the world. I, wow. I'm sorry. All right. There is art to this, and and people are missing it. There, You don't just put this. Like put this that, guy. That rake on the table. Shut up. Jesus, learn how to use it. <laughs> And, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah my, my, my community calls me the bridge master because I don't miss many shots with the bridge. 
Wow. Um, I just looked at the time, uh, uh, Mr. Sensei Brian. I do have to jump, um, but I love hanging out with you guys. And I am, <laughs> I'm going to be three minutes late for my next call. But, oh, my God. Um, send my apologies. All right. all right, guys. Have a great day. Thanks for including me in this. This is great, Chuck. <laughs> I Thank will, you, I'm going to talk to you guys. Like I said, I'm going to get you on my podcast because I'm going to start doing those a little bit more. I've been working on my lighting and my setup on the other part of the studio earlier today. So as soon as I get my notes together, we will work something out. All right, guys. Have a great day. I'll talk well, to God you. God bless. All right. Hasta bye -bye. luego. All right. All right. Bye-bye, uh, Sensei Brian. And uh, yeah, Mr. Chuck, listen, um, well, first off, before I even go into the, for FX Billiards, there's going to be a link. I'm going to put a link to Backyard Billiards as well because, Mr. Chuck, there is so many nuggets of wisdom you can get from this guy. Uh, not to mention that whole that, that bridge that bridge nugget that you just gave me just blew my mind. I am, whoa, of course. So, uh, I guess, yeah, man, Any anything you need to plug or, or what, what's, what's, what's going on? Uh, you can watch the rest of this rack as a must over. All right, yeah, let's finish this up. And let's see where we're at here. See here, I'm just trying to get back. Uh, use top, I come straight back for the three in the corner. Oh, I now, see it. Okay, okay. Now, I made I may sure to get the angle um, that I wanted. Uh, because when I make the three, uh, I think I come back and hit the stripe. Because I want to make sure I got an angle on that four by the corner. Okay. I end up having to get a, an extension on the end of my stick here. Oh, okay. So, uh, and let me see. You're, uh... Damn, you're whooping out all the weapons today. Uh, well, that's a pretty good tool. It's about 17, 20 bucks. Uh, it's just, and it just, it just tightens on the back of your stick. Uh, nice. I know I, I, me having that bridge out that far. Uh, you got to have a good stroke for that. Like yeah, that, and you yeah, like, cheated it too. And this is where well, I, it, it hit the point. You really must cheat in these pockets. Uh, almost every shot you do is is going in like that because it's so tight. Um, I imagine. Now this is where I point the, the the stick and show you where I want the cue ball. And you can literally put your finger where I point the stick at. Cause I gotta get that uh, orange uh, down there. Yeah, you can leave the you can leave the cursor right there where. Uh, right. Yeah. yeah, just leave it right there where it's at. All right. When I make this, watch watch the position. I can click it. Look at that. I can literally click the ball if I wanted to. And it would open a window if it was a Nikon. That was glorious. I cannot do that. Now you see Not I at this over, level. See where I went over to see where I can get on the eight? Yeah. But I didn't just shoot a shot. I, I shot a Pacific, you know, exactly where I wanted it. But this, is actually, this is actually a hard shot on this table. Yeah. And, you know, a little cut like that is hard. Now, I almost scratched. Yeah, I, yeah, but, yeah. I didn't want to put any extra English on it. Woo. I ended up losing that. I ended up losing uh, uh, seven to five on that one. Oh, but damn, still. I mean, that was a hell of a run there on that one. And uh, like even whipping out the big guns, like the extension and, and the bridge. You know, was if I got to take one of those out, I'm in trouble. <laughs> if I had to take the bridge out, I fucked up somewhere along, along the line. You know, unless I'm served that shot. Yeah, man. I mean, like, look, I, I don't want to downplay myself too much. I can make those shots, right? Now, the thing is, is getting position after the fact on those shots is virtually impossible for me. It's it's like I'm just literally, I'm at a point right now, if I have the bridge out, I got to make the ball. That's that's the only thing I get. If I try to, oh, if I put, let me let me put some English on it, I'm miscuing. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I just, I don't have that mastered quite yet, the bridge, you know? Well, try that fast data I told you about. I am definitely doing that. In fact, if when I should be hitting the tables today, I'm going to be. You're going to see clips that it's going to be a fast eight, 
Uh, it's gonna be fast eight. I'm gonna see if I can break and run those and all that stuff. You know, I'm, I'm, I wanna I wanna have fun with that. That's gonna be fun. Well, like I can but say, even if you're running, uh, only four no, go, uh, in a row, you know, in order one, two, three, four, you know, then build your way up, you know, and then think about what I told you about the the cue ball position. Okay, where do you want the cue ball to make this ball to get on this ball to get on the next ball? Because if you'll see it, just put put three balls out. Yeah, don't think about it and see if you can. Even three balls are hard if you, if you don't think about the cue ball position. And go back and look at my uh, uh, video on the uh, three ball position and what it means. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. Now, uh, on this, on that note, I'm definitely gonna, I'm gonna call it. I got to get my happy ass to work so I don't get fired, and then I can't do this anymore. But, guys, I will have links in the description below. I am. So so close, and by the way, don't leave. Don't don't leave when I when I sign out. I'm so close to to three thousand hours of view time. So so you know, by all means, hit like, hit subscribe, share the content, and and shed watch the content if anything. But um, you know, again, I'm gonna say uh, God bless uh, to Mr. Chuck, Mr. Backyard Billiards. Thank you again to Sensei Brian and FX Billiards, and we will see you guys next time.